I actually would like to have a house on a lake. That's what oh, I Oh, that'd be so pretty. Yeah. And the, that's actually what I plan on getting. Like yeah. maybe in the next maybe in the next year or two. Mm-hmm. And and I'd like to have nice big windows in the back so that it, you can see the lookout and see the lake. Mm-hmm. And and I'd like to have a loft with a master bedroom. I know exactly the house, the kind of house that I want because I mean, it's actually been built already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, but somebody else it. Owns it. Uh, yeah, somebody else owns it. And, and I actually knew the people that actually, that, that actually had it built. Mm-hmm. So, but they sold it to somebody else a long time ago because they get divorced. And But it's, it's just such a pretty house. But it's also yeah. up in the, in the town that I don't want to live in. So... Oh, well. I have to pick, yeah, I have to pick a different lake and build a different house. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, what's your house like? What's my house like? Mm-hmm. My, house, uh, my house is actually my uncle's trailer that I've been oh. tearing apart and rebuilding and adding on to it. And that's, <laughs> why, that's why I don't want to live here. Yeah, take care. I've never yeah, been in a trailer before. You haven't? No. Well, this, this, this isn't really like any normal trailer anymore because I've been <laughs> adding on to it and, and redoing oh, yeah. the whole thing. So, but it's still, it's it's like, it doesn't matter how much I do to it. The, the realtor told me that it's not going to increase the value of the property. So it's like, I thought about just, after doing everything I've done, I thought about just tearing it apart and building a house. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to live in Cornville. So I'll just right. finish the trailer and I'll build a house somewhere else and either rent rent this property here out or sell it or, or something. Yeah. But Sounds I, like I don't you got it all live. figured out. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to live here. I mean, the biggest reason I'm living here right now really is because of mom. She's bringing Scout mm-hmm. again and, and it's only like seven miles away from her. Gotcha. So. So we'll, we'll we'll figure it out though. But there are places that you would love to live. Like where? Lake. Like down by Round Pond where my brother lives. That's nice down there. That's close. That's close to the coast. There. I do like the ocean. I love surfing. It's gonna be cold surfing in Maine though. Well, I guess the ocean's cold anyway. Either way. Um, hell, I'd like to live down by the coast too. Yeah, and, and get away from the trees. Yeah, well, no, I like get away from the trees. <laughs> <laughs> we'll still have trees, <laughs> just won't be as many. <laughs> so uh, you go? You said you go skiing a lot. I used to go when a like a long time ago, and I haven't been mm-hmm. in a year. Last time I went, I was in the Air Force. We had a, a ski uh, a, a ski mountain right on the right on the base, and that was the last Is time that a, I went. There's an Air Force base there in Maine. No, I was just, I was stationed in Alaska. Oh, I, I was up with his real winter weather. <laughs> right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, so where do you ski then in Maine? Where do you go? Oh, you got, oh, let me see. You got Squaw Mountain. I got to remember all the mountains. Mount Katahdin has, has some. Mount, uh, Mount Katahdin is actually well, where, high So, well, the last time you skied in Maine, what mountain did you like going to? That was, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Ah, uh, shit. It's in Carabasa. The name the name of the town is Carabasa. Okay. Damn. I can't remember the, I can't believe I can't remember the name of that. <laughs> it begins with an S. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah. And, and find out the, the, the three kids that I used to babysit when I was a teenager and their mother we used to go there all the time. Go skiing and she she's the one that taught me how to ski. And she kept oh, looking really? behind her. Yeah, she kept looking behind her, and she ran right into a bunch of trees. Oh, small goodness. trees. 
yeah, thank God they were small trees, but <laughs> all I could think was, holy crap, she's teaching me how to ski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was too funny when that happened. Mm-hmm. But, but I thank God, I love that. I love skiing down there. But see, the skiing there, and that's not far from here. In the Squaw Mountain, there's Eden Mountain, which is really close to here. Um, mm-hmm. There's um, damn. Mount Katahdin. The, there's a lot of mountains around here, actually, that have ski slopes on them. I can't, I can't list off all the names of them because I haven't been to all of them. But there's a lot of mountains here, and there's a lot of lakes, too. Mm-hmm. But the further north you go, there's less, less population. So it's like, oh, well, yeah. for, for the south, they're getting more population. So if you move here back here to Maine, we can move down by the coast. Because I'd have a good job, and you started a dancing school. Oh, I mean, we can? Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't don't leave me out of it, do you? <laughs> uh, see, I got it all figured out. You started dancing school. You you make all kinds of money down there. Yeah, a lot of dancers lot there. Of, well, yeah, a lot of elderly people that, that want to learn how to how to do things and get out and do things. There's younger people that want to learn all the dancing and do all the yoga and stuff. And mm-hmm. I, You'd make some good money back here, especially down by the coast. Yeah, never thought about it. Yeah, now I get you thinking about it, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that that would really be awesome. Yeah. Think about this, too. Hmm. All of our family is back here on the East Coast. Mm-hmm. See? Your family? Um, yours too. You're from New Jersey. Yeah, I have some family there. Some family See? here. Oh, you got family there too? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> I didn't well, yeah, I've lived out there. here for almost 10 years now. You've only been out there for 10 years? Mm-hmm. What made you move out there? The acting? Yeah. Huh. Actually, you probably could get acting jobs from the back here in Maine because, mm-hmm. well, Stephen it's King lives right in Bangor. Oh, Stephen King yeah. Is, yeah. Stephen King lives right in Bangor. Huh? Just knock on his door, ask if he can give me a job. Yeah. I, I bet I could probably get a hold of him. You think so? I really oh. I didn't, well, there's, there's a guy that, well, Stephen King owns a radio station, but there's another another guy that that I know that works at a radio station, not the one that Stephen King owns, but he knows a lot of a lot of celebrities. Mm-hmm. He's met a lot of celebrities, and he actually he actually stayed over at my house one night with uh, with my brother, another one of my brothers. And, um. Stephen we, King, we went out, we went stay out. with your brother? Huh? You said Stephen King stays with your brother? No, no. The guy that, that worked at a radio station that uh, knows a lot of celebrities, he, he mm-hmm. stayed over my house one night when I had my septic business, and I lived in a different town. Mm-hmm. And he, him and another one of my brothers stayed over my house that night, and we went out to the bar and everything. And well, he, He's got all kinds of pictures of all kinds of celebrities that he's met and he's and plus he's on the radio all the time but he knows all kinds of celebrities and yeah i think well, he, i think he, i think he knows stephen king so i well, don't know reach out to him for me don't tell him that his movies are stupid <laughs> i'll tell him you know i know somebody that would be perfect in your movies mm-hmm. that's what i'll tell him I'll say I have a perfect person for you to play in your next movie. Yeah. Have you read any of his books? No. I just, I've watched a couple of his movies. Yeah, they're awful. 
Yeah, I know. That's, that's <laughs> why I don't read them. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's gonna, you he's gonna freak me out. No, I, I, I have moments when I do, and moments mm-hmm. when I don't. And it's like, well, actually, when I was incarcerated, I, I actually wrote a book. I actually wrote more than one book, but you wrote uh, a book. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't spend my time not doing anything when I was incarcerated. <laughs> but I, I wrote. When when I got out, my mom wanted me to publish it, and mm-hmm. I, I would I would write some in it, and then I'd send it back to her, and she would read it, and then I'd write some more of it, and I'd send it back to her, and she'd keep reading it. And she wanted me to to publish it when I got out, so I self published it. It's called it's called Taking Abroad. If you go on on com, mm-hmm. you'll be able to find it. You'll be able to find it on there. But that, oh, okay. What's it about? It, it's about a hundred hundred some odd pages long. No. <laughs> you want to you know you're gonna read it? <laughs> no, okay. actually, hang on. Hey, hang on a second. I'll I'll read to you what it's about. So I've got a copy right. of it right here. I think I get a copy of it right here. Yeah, right here. You just can't remember off the top of your head what it's about? Well, um, I do, but it's <laughs> it's better if I read it from the back of the book. Okay. Go so ahead. that way you get, you get a better picture of it. Okay. All right, I can turn, my, I can turn my light on here. I'm going to put my reading glasses on now. Your reading glasses? Yes. I had to start wearing reading glasses like a year and a half ago. Shocked the hell out of me. I looked at the looked at the book and I was trying to read. And I was like, "Why is this getting all blurry on me?" Mm-hmm. I had to wind up there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm still young. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> at least in my, in my mind, I am. Right. Okay. You can come Here's to my the... elderly hip hop class. Come to your what? My elderly hip hop class. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Come dance with the uh, old ladies. <laughs> what is that? Let's <laughs> see. Yeah, uh, and I'll be the youngest one there, and all those yeah, will be seventy-five and older, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you saw the way I dance, so you know you yeah, got to place you me where you see fit. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can show them how uh, it's done. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at me go. I step side to side <laughs> and swing my arms a little. <laughs> All right. I feel, like, I feel like such an idiot doing that dance, dancing for you. I was no, like, here I am dancing no. for, for somebody that dances professionally. Yeah, I look real intelligent. <laughs> well, okay. I'll, I'll read this to you. Okay. Okay. Preparing for life after high school. Aaron, Aaron I'm having a hard time seeing the words here. Like, like off the book. Preparing for life after high school, Aaron enlisted into the Army, anxious to serve his country and fight for what he believed in. After losing his closest friend to a sniper, Aaron lost it while in the field and spent three months in a psychiatric ward until he, until being shipped home. Once home, he falls in love with Brooke, a girl he meets on a blind date. Not long after getting engaged, he begins having nightmares of his time in Iraq, in the Iraqi war, but he puts it off as, as nothing serious. When the nightmares become more intense, Brooke talks to Aaron about seeing a psychiatrist, and because of the deep love that Aaron has for his family, he agrees. Unfortunately, the intense sessions with the psychiatrist don't help, and the night be, nightmares begin to affect Aaron further. Aaron can no longer fight the right and wrong of the murders he's about to commit. In the end, justice is served with the heartbreaking death that Aaron did not plan on. There you go. Okay. So, it's about PTSD. It's about what? I mean, PTSD. Kind of, yeah. Okay. It, it's a it, it's about some uh, a kid that goes in into the into the military 
after school and has things had yes, post traumatic stress no, but it's it's pretty much about that. Okay. It, oh, I'll have to buy it. Yeah. Um, you don't have to buy it. Just come here and you can read it. <laughs> Sneaky on that one, huh? <laughs> yeah, you got me. Yeah, I'd like to have you. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta get you moved to Maine. Can you not move? Like, well, I, I can, but I have to get permission from them. Oh. It's like, it's like I can get permission from probation. They have to okay it out in California, and I have to have a place to be out there and somebody that I know. And the area has well, to be right. you got your family, don't you? Uh, out in California? Yeah. No, they're not out there anymore. Oh. Yeah, because both uncles came back and one died. And both of my brothers moved back here a long time ago, too. How much longer are you on that for? They've got me on a supervised uh, supervision for life, supervised release for life. So it's, uh, it's what okay. my, from, what my, from what my lawyer told me when when I said uh, before I signed the plea agreement, he said that this is what it is, but it's once you take this class, you can go back to court and and get off supervised release because they don't want people being on supervised release if they're not a threat to the community. Oh, and like, okay. I, I haven't been a, a threat for God knows how long, and and they still have me in that class, and I figured out, I, I kind of figured out why they have me in there today, so I got to call my lawyer tomorrow, because I've already got my lawyer working on getting me out of that class. Mm -hmm. it's like, I should have been, uh, been out of that class in, within like a year and a half time, from what they told me from the start, but I've mm -hmm. never seen anybody get out of that class in a year and a half time. And... And it's like so they have a book. You've been in the class since you got out? Yeah. Oh, wow. You just get yeah. out? And I, I, um, there, there's one person that, I, that I've seen get out of the class. And, and I've actually had four different counselors. For mm. four years, I had, I had one counselor. But then all of a sudden, they, somebody got the contract. They, they sell the contracts. And it's, it's like they go with the lowest bidder, and somebody somebody else had gotten the contract, and I was with that person for a year, mm -hmm. and then another person got the contract, and I was with that person for a year or two, and then Wait, now. So what is this class for exactly? It, it's for the sex offender treatment class. That's what it's called. Okay. Um, and you've been in it since you got out? Yeah. And there's a book that you have to finish. And Must be a big book. Even, <laughs> well, it, it, was, it actually was pretty thick. And, well, the thing is, is you don't have to click and complete all the assignments in the book. But I took my time, and I took four years, and I completed every assignment. You know, until I, until I felt good about what I had completed, I made sure that I went through everything. So that mm -hmm. way, I felt I felt good about it myself because I, I had I had a lot of things happen well, to me. So so it's like I wanted to I wanted to get that stuff straight in my head of you know what brought me to that point where I was able to do something so terrible. Mm -hmm. So I wanted but to you understand finished, your point. You finished the book. No, oh, God, like I finished the book. Or what? Yeah, I, I, I finished the book four years ago. And they, wow. they still haven't let me out of class. So that's why I, had, I, I mean, we've been, me and my family's been bitching about it for the last four years. And finally, it's just, just got tired of it. And they, they can't even give me a reason now why I'm in there. Weird. So, yeah, so. Now it's like I get I got a got a lawyer, so we can either figure out why they still have me in there or get me out of there. And I'm I'm shooting for them to get me out of there. Well, because you they said can't even you, give me a reason. Well, you said you found out today the reason, right? Well, I I have I have an idea of the reason, and it's really not a reason because it has nothing to do with being a threat to the community. 
which is basically oh. the reason why you're in that class. It's so yeah. to make sure you're not, not a threat to the community. Um, the reason that, that I think it is, it's not even being a threat to the community. So you're in there because you're not a threat to the community? That's that's what I'm getting from it. <laughs> for from okay. what I from what I heard today, it, mm -hmm. well, it's not just today that that I heard it because I it took today for me to realize you know this is the this is like the the, the twentieth time that they've told me the same thing, and it's like mm -hmm. you know it just dawned on me that this has got to be the reason why they still have me in here because you can't I'm not just doing ask what. Them. Oh, I've asked them. I've asked them right out straight. They won't give and me a reason. They just tip their lips. They, they just tell me, "Is it hurting you being in there?" I'm like, "Well, no, it don't. Doesn't hurt me being there. Everybody should have counseling. It's good for them. It's good for them to talk and be able to talk to people." But mm -hmm. the the thing is, is I'd rather have a one on one session with somebody than I would well, be so in a class of people. I'm not understanding. So, what's the issue then? The issue is that they, they have me. They in, just won't tell you. Yeah, they won't. They won't tell me what the reason is. And mm. So they they can't come up with a reason. They've got to have a valid reason. It's well, like they gotta have looking. a reason, otherwise they let you out. Yeah, well, that, that's that's the thing though. They're not telling me what the reason is. So in order for me to find out the reason, I have to get a. I have I have to actually have a lawyer to to do it. Mm -hmm. and, oh, okay. And I, thought, and I, I must have misheard you. I thought you said you figured out the reason. Oh, oh, I, I think I figured it out. So I got to call my lawyer tomorrow and tell him what what I think, and mm. so that so that he can so he he knows what I'm hearing from the counselor and from probation. So, what do you think it is at the issue? I think it's because. Because they want me to get out in, in the community more and, and socialize. They, they've stated this out very uh, many times that that they want me to meet people out in the community. And it's like I meet people out in the community every day. I mean, I, I go to the stores and I talk to people. But it, it's like I, well, I don't oh, ask them out on dates and stuff Come like on. that. Well, yeah, I know. But it's, it's like I, I don't go bowling. <laughs> I don't well, mind. Why do I need to go follow one? <laughs> you think it's possible they mean like volunteering, not just like talking to strangers? Well, volunteering wouldn't be bad. Hmm. Well, huh. that's something nobody said to me yet. Volunteering, which I've like, well, actually. Well, you said they said I, they go out to the community, so. That's what that means, I think. Well, and I've, I've volunteered before because I went over the humane site and volunteered over there. You put dogs down? Huh? Do you put dogs down? Do I put dogs down? Yeah, like put them to sleep. Is that what you did? No. That's what Good I would God, do. God, no. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're mean. <laughs> you would love my dogs, really. Probably not. I, uh, I've never I, met I, a dog I like. I bet you would. Uh, I bet you would like these, these two. Because one Make of them, them is, outside. One of them is extremely skittish, and so she was abused before. She spends a majority of her time she spends on the bed, just laying mm -hmm. on the bed. And Roscoe is like her safety net, and and he's he's old. He used to be rambunctious before, but now he's older and settled down. And I think I think after these two, I don't want to get any more because, you know, I've, I've had dogs all my life, and yeah, it, it, it's it's they shed, they smell bad. Well, well yeah, unless you give them baths and stuff. <laughs> I mean, there are ways to get around them smelling bad. <laughs> uh, I guess. If the food, they need attention they, all the time. Yeah, but you, you think about how loyal uh, they are. 
how think about how loyal they are to you, how much protection they are. I'd rather they, die. Oh, don't say that. You can't die. You and I just got to be able to start talking here. <laughs> I, I do love dogs, but they're so hard when, when something happens and you don't have them. It's after, like what? Is it dangerous where you live? No. Um, when when this thing happened, I had I had Bud, my my black lab that I had when I was down there in Nashville. And I actually had him when I, I you know, when I got my CDL and I was out in Washington State. They they actually sent me one time to to Georgia, and that's where I found Bud. He was he was abandoned and abused. His, his ribs were were showing. He had scars on his head, and, and mm-hmm. I was. I was talking to my sister on the um, on the the dock, you know, on the payphone on the dock, and and he came over and started barking at me. So I got off the the phone with her, and from a distance he looked like a full grown dog. But then I got up close and I realized he was just a puppy. And the nearest house was like 20 miles away, so I threw him up in the truck and fed him two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and, and had him ever since that. I rid him for nine years, right up till the point of the sting. And when the sting happened. And I had to have my my best friend Tony uh, go down from Maine down to Nashville and get him. So that that was rough on me. Mm-hmm. But but he wanted. So up where, you don't have that dog anymore. No, he's probably dead by now. He he probably died. Oh wow. Yeah, he well, cause he was nine when when this thing happened. And, mm, yeah, probably dead. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's probably he probably died four four or five years ago. Yeah, imagine. probably. He was a he was a really good dog. Every dog I have is a really good dog because they're, cause they're loving. Mm. They've, got oh, a, well. they've got a lot of love in them. They've got a lot of love in them. Right. I well, have, I have a cat too. Yeah. Okay. Here's something to tell you. Hmm. Okay, down in southern Maine, mm-hmm. which is which is around the area that's where a lot of rich people are down there. Well, there's there's the malls down there, mm-hmm. and you don't have to go far to go to the malls. Okay. That helps sell you. That helps with what? It helps sell you a little bit. <laughs> I'm reaching here. Tell me oh, if they pitch oh, this video. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> Tell yeah, me if they pitch this video. Yeah, there's a mall here. There's a mall everywhere. <laughs> uh, okay, here, here's something else that I'll tell you. The, the the white population is greater than than the black or Hispanic population. <laughs> uh, see, that ought to sell you right there. Mm. I know California has a lot of Hispanic people. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to go make dinner, okay? So I'll talk to you later. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.